prepping X. We weren't sure if we were going to make Pearl. We were thinking we were going to, but we had not had the official green light. So we were kind of playing around with ideas and planning little Easter eggs based on the script and little bits of wallpaper here and props here and there. But it wasn't until we got the final green light that we really went ahead and prepped Pearl for real, which I think we did over the course of three and a half, four weeks in between production of X and Pearl. And it was very strange to, to be making a movie on a farm for over a month and then go away for about a month. And when you came back, the farm looked totally different. It was also a bit of a surreal transition to go backwards 60 years. I know for a lot of the crew, it felt a bit like a lucid dream when they showed up and the lawn had been cut and it was green again and the paint on the barn was brand new and the house that they had spent so much time in that was decrepit and falling apart was now this brand new, otherworldly, dreamlike place. And surprisingly, making things new is a lot easier than making things old. Because when you make things old, you have to get all these very idiosyncratic, esoteric details of cobwebs and just the right amount of scuffs on the wall and just the right amount of scratches and mold and dirt. When it's brand new, you, you're pretty much just putting up wallpaper. It was really just more of a matter of aesthetics and trying to choose the right colors. And we did spend a lot of time if you looked at our wall in our office, there was probably swatches of red for the barn, and there was probably 50 of them. And realistically, they all looked exactly the same, but we were just really trying to get it just right. And the tiniest differences meant the world to us. So we were always really obsessing over these little tiny details, especially because the thing with Pearl is that it is this sort of Technicolor-inspired aesthetic. And that's easier said than done because it's something everyone's seen, but it's not something that everyone's made. And so when you set out to do it, you know, we had the overalls for Mia and trying to get to dye them just right and to try to get the dresses to be just bright enough red and to get the purple to be the right kind of purple because there's something that can look very modern and new and then there's something that can look very classic. One of the strangest moments was when we finished X and we had, I don't know, maybe a day off and we went back into the production office and it had completely changed. It had gone from being this 1970s inspired production office into this very strange golden age of Hollywood type experience. And it was very bizarre to step into a room and look at props that were so removed from the movie we had just spent so much time making. We'd been obsessing over props for months and now there was all these new props and they looked totally different. And it was really interesting to kind of go backwards into a different world because it's not a situation you ever find yourself in. I mean, this is incredibly rare that this movie was greenlit before even making the first one. So we were really building out the world in real time and it was really a trip for everybody. One of the most memorable stories of, of the production was the owners of the house. You know, their, their house wasn't like it looked in X. We made it look all kinds of beat up and old in X. And when we finished X, we thought, well, we'll have to repaint everything and return it to the quality that we showed up and found. But then we made Pearl, so we kind of made it this weird Disney-style brand new thing. And we thought, we're going to have to undo all that. But actually, they fell in love with it, and they were really inspired by it. So as far as I know, if you went to their house in New Zealand today, it looks exactly like it does in Pearl. So somewhere out there, there's a family living in that house, in that world that we created. Mm -hmm.